chocolate milkshake sneaking toward the top of his room. Mm -hmm. uh, to bowling balls floating in the air. Mm -hmm. to, I, I have all his data and I've been and I, I've been uh, you know, following it. I'm a senior scientist from Lockheed Martin. I have been a senior research engineer for Howard Hughes, Texas Instruments. Nevertheless, uh, we've been uh, we've been working for some time now in order to determine where the next energy levels are going to come from. We uh, now by that I mean that we aren't talking about we're talking about wind or solar or or even atomic. We have uh, we have we have other formats of energy that. that uh, that we've theoretically proven that are Yes, let me introduce myself. My name is Rod Kowicki, physicist, uh, author of the Supertelic Electromagnetic Gravitational Universe Technology Theory. It's a new theory for fast and light speed space travel. Is it possible? Yes, it is. And uh, what I have uh, shown you earlier, that clip with uh, Boyd Bushman, is the manner in which anti-gravity lightens an object. It tricks gravity into thinking that there's no object there and it creates a field around it which rejects the force of gravitation. Uh, the Boyd experiment uh, was done in 1995. It's on record at, at Lockheed uh, Aviation Departments. Uh, he also worked for a couple other places, ITT, uh, used aircraft. And uh, as you can see, anti-gravity has to do with space flight. Uh, not only material, but creating a device like his, which is proof, which we, I showed you that ball levitating in the air, that will lighten a ship when it is in the air. In other words, you turn on the device and it will trick gravity into thinking that it's not, it's not there. And by lightening the object's weight, and tricking gravity, you have the means to increase acceleration. My theory, the supertelic universe technology theory, illustrates the, mean, the same means, but in modern day time, the atmosphere of interstellar space, which is zero mass. If it's zero mass, and there's no energy, uh, in the vicinity, immediate vicinity or field, then you have nothing pulling on it. There's no attraction that you have to travel against, uh, a buildup of uh, pressure, let's say, or a magnetism that actually slows you down, slows the object down. That's what happens on Earth with acceleration. The gravity attracts the object and actually slows it down. How much does it slow it down? It slows it down 50%. Uh, now, uh, in space, the object is not slowed down, as you know, and uh, a ship traveling in space uh, retains no brakes, uh, no gravity brakes, let's say, uh, gravity that will slow it down. No, you keep going. You, if you reach 25,000 miles an hour, you're going to keep going 25 miles an hour in space. Okay. And gravity is different. It attaches to the object, and it slow keeps the momentum on it, slowing down. It square roots its velocity. So in other words, if 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 the object has the potential the atomic propulsion potential to travel 
at 25,000 miles an hour, uh, it only travels 12,000 miles an hour because of gravity. And this is a fact. And one of these facts, and one of the boy, the boy Bushman experiment shows, is that if we can trick gravity and create an anti-gravity device like he's shown, then the object has a, has its full potential velocity if you can drop it down to zero point energy. In other words, if you can drop the energy, attractive, uh, uh, the attractive uh, attraction density of energy and drop uh, it all the way down to zero, that means the object actually floats. Uh, Bushman experiment shows that he, he has been able to done, do this with a one pound object 50%. He didn't actually make it levitate, but he made it slow down in its deceleration from, uh, from gravity. You know, he dropped two balls, one with his device in it and one without his device. The one with his device traveled at the normal speed to the ground. The other one, it took twice as long. Its, its weight was, was tricked uh, gravity 50%, actually 53%.